Sport drivers have been given an opportunity to secure themselves within the upper echelon of road racing here on iRacing by winning a slot to compete in the Porsche Tag Heuer eSports Super Cup. But only 15 of them will see that dream become a reality. We're live here from Hockenheim for the first round of the Porsche Tag Heuer eSports Super Cup Contender Series. My name is Connery Maddock and for this season I'll be joined by the ever wonderful Jake Sperry and Joe Peak. Jake, I'll come to you first. I've been waiting for this moment for a quite long time after the end of that qualifying series to see who exactly gets themselves their slots into that big old series. Well, this is the time and the place where you have to effectively say talking stops. You've got to make sure that all of the pace, all of the work, all of the anticipation culminates in what is 12 races over the course of seven weeks worth of action. Of course, it will be six weeks as a one week break in the middle, but it's going to be incredible. And I can't think of a perfect place, Connery, to start this season off. You've got uh, the perfect matrimony of old and new, the old circuit as you go through the final sector of the lap and the new, of course, as they cut through around at turn number four. This is going to be an incredibly important challenge to start things off. Well, speaking of the circuits, Joe, you can take me through that one. We are here at Hockenheim, not only at the Hockenheim circuit, but also at the National A circuit as well. It's going to be a theme coming through this season that will be on more shortened layouts compared to the, more, uh, the larger Grand Prix uh, sections. Which is one thing that I love, honestly, because it throws a bit of variety. And you can see here on the map that uh, it's going to make a big difference in the fact that the Parabolica is shortened. They don't go to the Spitzker, so it's a little bit less of a run. It's going to be harder to pass because of that. And it's also a double apex off camber corner there at turn four. Expect a lot of difficulty and a lot of mistakes there. Rest of the lap, yes, you can set up some overtakes here and there but it's going to be tight racing. They're going to have to get aggressive to get these done. And there's your usual danger zone, such as into the first corner. There's a huge curb to the inside. You can't really take too much of it, though you do have to glance off of it to find some speed. And then, of course, the arena and the stadium sections towards the end of the lap are going to be a little bit tight and twisty and really force drivers to have to stay patient out here. All in all, this newer version of the circuit, though it has been contentious in some days, I think it puts on an incredible show. Yeah, I think it does as well. There's uh, plenty of opportunity for, uh, for, uh, uh, for scraps to go on here over the course of this race. Yes, you do lose that one overtaking opportunity down into the hairpin, but it uh, shouldn't really affect things too much. Let's have a look at your schedule uh, then coming into this season. Of course, six weeks worth of racing action. Like you mentioned, there is that break in the middle. But Jake, this is always tough here. Um, in a season like this, when you're doing so many back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back race weeks, there's not a lot of time for preparation. No, there isn't. And you have to consider as well that they have themselves the sprint race, which is half the distance of the main race that they have. So today it will be 11 laps worth of racing action to begin with. That's what qualifying will determine how the grid will sort itself out today. And then it will be a top eight invert here today to make sure that the grid is set for the main race. 22 laps, everything to sort at. And what I will say is there might be a slight advantage today, Connery, for those drivers who qualified into this series through the qualifying series. Why would you ask that or say that? It's because they had to go through all of these tracks in the qualifying series. Those who qualified, for example, by being relegated from the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup, they find themselves in a position today where they are learning the tracks on the fly. Yeah, they're certainly going to have the upper hand in terms of the preparation coming into today. We've got qualifying going on out there at the moment. Of course, it's going to be one lap qualifying, just one attempt at your qualifying lap. And if you don't get it right, Joe, well, you're going to have to start at the very back of the grid potentially. Yeah, and there's a lot of places where it's so difficult to know that edge because, yes, they've got the curbs to try and alert them, but you're trying to get all the way out there and if you go off track around here you're going to find your your lap deleted so you basically get lined up according to i rating at the back of the field and considering like i said it's it's difficult to try and make overtake stick you're going to want as much track position early as you can especially in that sprint 
We saw a couple of the Danes out there, those from Fyro. We saw Mat uh, Matthias Stoke back as well from the Apex Racing team. Uh, it's great to see those guys get themselves involved in this one. Here are the, well, here's the recap of the format. Then we have eight minutes, one lap lone qualifying before we head into our 11 lap sprint race. Then we'll have a little bit of a break of roughly five minutes before we get ourselves into the main race, the 22 laps. And well, that grid will be set based on a top eight reverse grid from the sprint race. So lots to look forward to here today at Hockenheim here, Jake. It's, uh, it's certainly, uh, well, a very nervous, potentially anxiety-inducing moment for a lot of these drivers, especially for those that potentially might have qualified through what I would call is like sort of the wild card uh, entries here. Those that have done well in their regional series that have been able to book themselves a slot here in the contender series. Let's take me through that. Absolutely, and I think that it's so important as we watch uh, Alessandro Bico out there, as we did just for a moment, as the first laps are about to come in. I think it's so important, Connery, to look as let's say back here tries to make the run for the line it's so important to look at who gets a good qualifying here in the early stages of this season mainly because this is where nerves are tested the most one lap one opportunity if your lap goes wrong through one corner you've got to try and find a way to gather that time back it is the ultimate form of qualifying as jordan caruso for altus makes a charge towards the line Plus, are back towards uh, provisional pole position at the moment. Well, I was making a whole point of the wildcard drivers being nervous. Not so um, for in, in this situation. A couple of them have been able to get themselves up there. Um, but uh, as we see the rest of the uh, well, final couple of laps uh, for the drivers starting to come through. Now we've got 24 uh, getting themselves onto the starting grid for the moment. Of course, if they're unable to set a time, then they will be starting towards the very back of the starting grid. Here's Tim Yarschel, uh, one of the Germans, number 53, heading his way up to and across the line for now. It's a good advantage that back has got himself at the very front of the field so far, over a tenth of a second. And, well, in any regular racing, you think, oh, tenth of a second, you know, that is actually pretty close. However, when the field is as competitive as this and when, as the uh, Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup, the main series tends to be as well, a tenth of a second is actually quite a margin. It really is, and uh, especially in a track as short as this, at uh, about 122 for our fast drivers, they need to be on top of it. You can't make even the smallest of mistakes. So we see Cipola here, one of our last to be able to set a time. And what I found interesting, and I guess appropriate, is uh, the Finns, not the one that are, are shown most around here. We have the most nationality from Germans, actually, appropriately. Yep, well, German car brand, German participation, exactly. all's, all's well and good in the world, as we see well, the brake smoke from the Kova car heading their way across the line now. We've just got a few uh, remaining minutes here in qualifying, but it seems like the uh, the vast majority of drivers have been able to set themselves their times. There's Richie Stanaway there uh, down on pit lane for the moment in the number 62 machine. And, uh, of course, he's got himself, uh, well, he's got himself, uh, you know, towards the back of the starting grid here, Jake. But, of course, he's one of the drivers that we didn't necessarily expect to see in this, uh, uh, well, uh, I was going to say he expected to see do so well in this series, but of course, you know, that would be an insult to most of these drivers, but it's, uh, it's good that he's gotten himself in. Look, Richie Stanaway, I think, is the most incredible story out of everybody in this field. He was the last driver in from the qualifying series to put, book his place, and he's had a storied racing career already. He was 2011 German Formula 3 champion, for example. Found himself a victory at the Sandown 500 when it came to Supercars. He is absolutely fantastic. He's had a storied career, and he's just adding on to that is the 30-year-old now as he looks to make his eSport foray. I think it's incredible right now just what this series can do, and it just goes to show you that that when it comes to sim racing, it is probably the truest recreation when it comes to esports to push forward. And you could do that today, logging on to iRacing.com forward slash PESC to keep an eye on schedule standings and how to become a driver. Yep, indeed. Uh, absolutely fantastic opportunity to get yourself involved. Go to iRacing.com forward slash PESC. That's iRacing.com forward slash PESC, P-E-S-C. And uh, getting yourself involved in iRacing today. And, uh, uh, well, Joe, the end of qualifying is well has pretty much arrived, although we do have to wait a little bit before we get ourselves our starting grid. Uh, how would you take, uh, well, what's your perspective of the uh, first qualifying session of the season? 
Well, I'd say that uh, what we said earlier is really what it comes down to is it's so, so tight out here. And uh, it, it takes a lot of talent to get up to the top. You can see the only American that we have in the series, Bobby Zelensky, here on the screen. He's interesting because this is a driver that's also competing at the same time in the eNASCAR series. So he is one of those all-rounders that everybody's jealous of, the triple threat, I guess you could say. He can sing, he can dance, he can do everything. And... Uh, uh, Bobby looks very uh, relaxed, I have to say, as well, uh, uh, leading up to this thing. We'll see if he can do just as well, because he's taking wins and all kinds of accolades over on the oval side. Yeah, I I'm barely good enough at one car track combo, Jake, let alone an entire, you know, two, three separate disciplines that some of these drivers usually take part in. It's great to see that adaptability from these drivers. Yeah, we basically talk about it every single uh, season of this, but it's always, you have to always have to be in awe of some of these guys that they're able to do so many things to such a level. Absolutely. I mean, he joins a long storied list of drivers who are able to do everything. The likes of the Sturgios brothers, the likes as well of... Uh, those who are there it's absolutely fantastic and you can see here number 46 out there he's going to be ready and we're going to be ready in just a couple moments to head ourselves over to what is the sprint race yes indeed we are 11 laps of racing action here for this sprint race the qualifying grids or starting grid has been set for our first race of the season. Lasse back on pole position with Alexei Nesov on row number one as well. Don Crusoe lines up third with Matthias Stokbach Jensen in fourth with Thomas Tadzler and Diani Vecchio, Vecchio there on the outside of row number three. Then we have Jeff Giassi with uh, Peter Berryman. Simone Maria Marceno lines up in ninth place with Alessandro Pico in tenth. Uh, Ultra Melga in P11 with Oscar Bixrud in P12. Christopher Dambitz will uh, line up in 13th with Sam Keaton in 14th. We got Oscar Mangan and Valentin Mandanach there in P16. We've got P17 going to Julian Sonnen with Josh Thompson lining up in 18th here today. Gustavo Ariel in P19 with Ascari Rina in P20. William Chadwick in P21 here today with uh, Jacob Machuski in P22. Tim Yarshall P23, Richie Stanner where Asanoe, excuse me, AP24, Matti Sipola, P25, Bobby Zelensky, Prenti Violate, and Andre Melchers with Kevin Nielsen rounding up the 29 drivers that set times. Those who did did not set times, Luca Kita, Victor Miranda, Phil Bouchard, David Williams, and Bryn Collins. Those guys will have to start right at the very back of the grid here for the sprint race. So not an ideal start to the season for those particular drivers. Uh, but they'll have to just, uh, you know, with lemons, make lemonade in this situation, Jake. Yeah, they certainly will. It's going to be a long road, but they've got two races to bring it back. And that's how it looks. I'd say ideal conditions out there today. 79 degrees Fahrenheit track temperature. I'd say this is perfect overtaking opportunities out there today. Absolutely. We're just waiting for a couple of cars to take themselves to the starting pit before we go racing here at Hockenheim. Turn number one, not a break, big breaking zone whatsoever. It's turn number two that you really have to be worried about at this circuit. That's going to be one of the places that you'll see the biggest moves being made here, at least initially on the start. The Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Contender Series is about to get itself underway here at Hockenheim. We are go and racing down towards turn number one. Cars getting out single file out front relatively easily as uh, we saw Anthony Mackerel and sweep his way across the nose of Jordan Caruso. But Caruso getting himself a very good drive out of turn one. We see a big incident towards the very back though as we see the fighting going on for P2. Alexei Nesov holding on to that second spot. I see Sipola involved in that. Miranda, unfortunately, got completely turned around. He's absolutely at the back of the field. So that was a couple of our relatively mid-pack drivers that are of a sudden really disadvantaged. Indeed, into the hairpin then, or rather the shortened hairpin for the first time. Jordan Caruso trying to hold position up against um, uh, Matthias Jensen. And behind him, you've got Gianni Vecchio and Thomas Tatler going at it on their way through the left hand. A fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic amount of action here on the first lap. All is pretty fair and clean, at least at the very front. Of course, we saw that instant towards the very back, Jake, but everyone else seems to have gotten their, themselves away well. Ideal for a first race of the season. And I just want to touch on Datala there for a moment because he was having to attack against uh, Gianni Vecchio. And it was ultimately the moment he started attacking, it went wrong. Someone's gone off there in the gravel, then in the background. That's no good. 
going through that amazingly fast right-hander which leads to this beautiful stadium section and that could have been disaster there. But the key is going to be how do you manage the opening laps? You have to pick and choose in this series when you attack and when you defend. Top eight currently invert and at the moment it's Jeffe Giassi who is currently there at the moment in eighth position. He's lost one off of the start and pushing forward but one thing I did keep an eye out on was how defensive on the opening lap Connery Alexei Nyesov was compared to Jordan Caruso attacking. And just real yeah. quick I want to jump in that was Kaiser that got hit by Thompson into that corner and went off so first lap going horrible for them. Yeah, indeed, and uh, well, for those uh, in that area, it has not been a great start to the sprint race. You're absolutely right, Jake, though, about uh, Alexei Nyesov putting up the brick wall, at least as far as Jordan Caruso was concerned, off of that initial start. We do have a replay uh, of the start, and not only the start, but of course the uh, wreck that happened on the way through turn number one. Let's take another look at it, Joe. Yeah, as we take a look down into there, this is down, it looks like, towards... Uh via lots that got that started as Cipola was the one that got into the side of him. He was actually squeezed, it looks like, in a three-wide situation. Zelensky, maybe a little too used to the wide uh, breadth of an oval track today. He might have been coming towards the uh, the end of lap number two, onto the lap number three of 11 here. That's a back still leads from Alexei Nyesov from Jordan Caruso. That's your top three. Reverse grid pole position sitter at the moment. Jake, you mentioned it. It's uh, Giassi there uh, starting seventh down into eighth. Sometimes uh, in these sorts of races, these sprint races, the race for P8 can be a little bit more interesting than the, than the race for the race lead sometimes. It certainly can. And uh, at the moment, as we take a look at Jordan Caruso here in third position, you have to be uh, alert to it at this point in time. Caruso racing at the dead of night at this moment in time when it comes to Australia, living right now in Melbourne, making his run to the double apex right hand hairpin, trying to get the power down as early as possible off of the exit. He's looking at these front two drivers, Lesse Back and Alexei Nyesov, thinking I'd like to be there, but I've got an entirely aggressive pack behind me in terms of Matthias Stockbeck Jens and Gianni Vecchio, Vecchio is there behind. It's going to be an incredible battle. And something that I've caught an eye out on here, Connery, is that Matthias Stockbeck Jensen turned 17 yesterday. That, that just makes me feel old, Jake. Uh, I don't know about you, Joe. Does that make you feel old? Uh, don't even come to me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. But yeah, it, it's amazing seeing them, seeing some of these youngsters, and I mean that in the best way in the world, come into uh, sim racing, come into high-level competitive sim racing as well. We talk about, you know, uh, methods of getting into motorsports you know traditionally the way has been through karting joe um which can end up being rather rather expensive it's much more cost effective for you to get yourself involved in sim racing and then potentially get yourself into the upper leagues like this one as we see uh the absolute send coming through there from vecchio in the uh in a little bit of a scrap with uh, jensen Oh, but see, this is what's going to happen all day. Anytime we see passes into two, they come down to four, and they're still going to be side by side because the fight back is so easy to do. This is going to give uh, uh, give him the inside, and it looks like Jensen might be able to fend him off, but he's going to have to feed him out here and be aggressive, and he doesn't. He plays fair. He gives him some space, and instead, he's going to get shoved right back. So this is the kind of stuff it looks like we're going to have to expect is the give and take sometimes doesn't go both ways. Well worked there from Vecchio to be able to squeeze his way past. There was, of course, racing room given. Not all that much, I will admit, but racing room given. And now Vecchio can potentially sight, set his sights ahead to try and catch the uh, the top three leaders who have uh, decided to break away a little bit by about a second uh, back to these guys in fourth place. What they can't afford is to lose touch of them too much, Chick. No, they can't because this is a very important track to stay within about one and a half seconds range of. That gives you that extra bit of toe, that slipstream, which is so vital in a series like this to mitigate the damages of those behind who are trying to use that advantage to push forward. Everyone's going to be trying to push as Vecchio, uh, Vecchio takes a really, really big line through turn one at the Nord Curve, giving everything possible to try and break away and close back up to Jordan Caruso in the 12 in third position. But that pack just behind him is a massive pack and it keeps on stretching back and back and you could go all the way back to about 20th position, all the way back to the likes of Maciejewski, for example, to say they are technically in this fight 
for fourth position as it's now looking like Stockbake Jensen might start to become the cork in the proverbial bottle. He could be, let's see what his, uh, well, defending skills are like here in this sort of situation. Of course, for some of these drivers, they may have not been involved in a situation like this where they have so many high-level drivers around them. Yes, some of them might have competed at the, uh, the top of the qualifying series or the top of their regional uh, leagues, uh, but uh, sometimes this can be seen as a little bit more of a different situation. Look at them coming through the stacks curves, absolutely nose to tail here in the mid-pack. If you want an example of how close this series is, Joe, I think we have it. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, you made a good point of, about that closeness is that it basically makes the bigger and smaller picture exactly the same. If you want to get into the Super Cup, you're going to have to be consistent and limit mistakes. Anybody in this group, same deal here. If they make one small, small mistake, it's not going to cost them one position. It's probably going to be a couple. Running on board with Giassi in the number seven car and just look at the trailer cars behind him. And this is the battle for the reverse grid pole position here, Jake. It's a crucial position to be in if you want to try and give yourself the best chance of giving, uh, giving yourself a boatload of points in that main Ooh. race. Of course, you do have to convert on that qualifying position as it seems like potentially an issue with Vecchio. Yeah, yeah Vecchio... Just... Yeah, I'd managed to catch that out the corner of my eye. He just ran a little bit deep. He lost a couple of positions, but it hasn't affected this P8 battle right now. With Giassi out there at this moment in time, holding back two Italians in Simone Maria Marceno and Alessandro Bico. And behind that, the Norwegian Oscar Bixro, who's looking to try and go through. Bixro, of course, last season became the youngest ever driver to start in the Porsche Esports Super Cup at just 15 years of age. And he's trying to get himself through as they go through. And I believe we've got a look here, Connery, at what happened with Vecchio. Let's see what happens then. This is the run down in towards that sort of modified hairpin. Oh, it's a lockup of the inside right front, and it just sends him wide, and it's a free couple of positions uh, for those behind as well. It's a crucial mistake there uh, for Vecchio, and it just goes to show you make that one little error, there's going to be a train of cars just very eager to squeeze their way by through on you, and you're going to have trouble slotting back in potentially as well. It's honestly one of the things that I was hearing about from the top drivers is that the brakes are the most difficult part of this car. And so we're probably going to see mistakes like that, especially as the race goes on. Expect them to have difficulty managing it into the braking zone and not overshooting. Very difficult. Here's the battle, though. Look at that. Jordan Caruso is closed up all the way to the back of Alexei Nyesov. Nyesov's going to have his work cut out here to try and keep that number 12 Altus Esports car behind him. We're on board with the Urano car, looking back, and well, you can see uh, Nesov, he's got to make sure he doesn't get himself too panicky here, otherwise he'll start making mistakes potentially and let Caruso through. We saw it with Vecchio already, but Caruso is certainly applying as much pressure as he can coming through the Saks curve to make sure that he has at least one chance at getting up into second spot by the time this race is done. I mean, Nyasov's doing a really good job of prioritizing the exit of all of these corners. It's what's giving him the opportunity to go out and build a couple tenths of a second buffer right now in terms of what he's trying to do with Caruso. And it gives Caruso no opportunity to go and make that move. They're running out of laps now. They're down to just four laps to go. Let's say Back is gone out of this race. He's leading this one by 1 1.8 seconds. It's going to be a tough job to close him down. But this battle, second, third, I mean, just look at the rear brakes. They go in towards the Iron Park Parabolica. They are lighting and glowing up as they go through. They are really trying to hit the absolute limits and it's still not uh, over for fourth and fifth behind because you've got Datala who is looking through and just look at the train as they go through. Simone Maria Marcheno's chain right now as we take a look at Oscar Bickstrand on the brakes then in towards the hairpin. Yeah, this is uh, like a box of dry, f uh, of dry straw that uh, potentially one spark might alight into a massive inferno. But uh, we will just have to see what the uh, remaining four laps have uh, have in store for us here. Blasevac getting himself a two-second almost advantage at the very front of this field. There's no stopping that fire car whatsoever here in the sprint race at Hockenheim. But the uh, positions behind him still very much up for grabs as we uh, ride on board with the Coanda machine of the very young Oscar Victorit. Yeah, I'm going to see what his perspective is here coming onto the front stretch just in front of him. That is Alessandro Bico out of Italy. 
and uh, racing for Williams Esports. You can see them just straddling that curb. That's about what you want to do, but it's a very dangerous game to play. You go a little bit too far and you find yourself racking up uh, off tracks and uh, you uh, can't rack up too many of them here. And plus, it's just a loss of time if you bound over that thing because it sends the wheels up into the air, of course, as we got to fight into turn one. Oh, Caruso had a look, didn't he? He got himself at least towards the inside, but didn't feel that he had a significant enough overlap to be able to complete that move into turn two. He's going to get the slipstream down in towards the hairpin now as well. Is he going to make a lunge from a couple of car lengths back? He thinks about the possibility, but ducks back in line, which I feel would be the better decision here, Jake. But, uh, well, if there was any doubt about, about whether Caruso is desperate for second place, well, I think we're all sure of it. There is a problem, though, with the way that Caruso is trying to put himself into the right position. That is, if he tries to go for this move too often, he's bringing Matthias Stockbeck Jensen and Duomath Battler back into the fight. And that is not what you want to do in this situation. The more bodies you put, essentially, into a pack of cars like this, now four, it makes it easier for the car in front to defend because essentially you can go, well, I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm doing something. You lot can all decide to scrap about and I'll try and charge back on the exit and get away and make my gap. So that's going to be what's in the mind of Alexei Nyesov for Caruso. He now knows he's got to both attack and defend at the same time. I like to call that Schrodinger's overtake. Yeah, it's uh, always an awkward situation to be the meat in the sandwich such as this one. But we only have two laps to go now. Not a lot of opportunities to try and get these moves done. Of course, Spack has just run away into the sunset. Race lead is pretty much off the cards for all of these drivers. But podium spot, still a possibility. It's just a matter of what configuration they come across the line in. No opportunities this time in towards the hairpin. Yesov has been able to hold on to that quite well. Uh, but uh, Caruso, he's definitely going to uh, get the feeling, give this a last-ditch attempt, potentially on the final lap. He's got to prioritize these traction zones, though. Make sure he gets those launches out of the corner so that he can enable himself to even have an opportunity at that overtake. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking the same thing. That's really the focus right now, and not necessarily for the attacks. I think more so for the defense. You want to keep anybody from having even a think about a lunge on this last lap because every point is going to be important. So really, he needs to try and make sure he gets the traction down as smoothly and as as best as he can. And it sounds like we had an incident towards the back here. Yeah, it seems like we've gotten words that Josh Thompson potentially has had a little bit of a spin. Let's have a look at that on the replay in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Let's see what the situation is. Oh, just drops it on the way into the corner there. I don't think there was any contact between himself and anyone else. Seems like that was just a solo car incident as we get ourselves onto the final lap of racing here at Hockenheim for the sprint race. Remember, this is not going to be the total end of things. We have a 22 lap feature event coming up, but this is going to be important for the grid of that event as uh, Caruso perhaps not getting himself the drive needed off of the, uh, off of the first sector to allow an opportunity into the hairpin. He's going to have to try and manufacture some sort of opportunity as Jensen almost goes straight into the back of him. He tried. He absolutely did. But there's still a chance left. The Sax curve's probably the last great place. And I tell you what, it's on right now for what is eighth place as well. That final transfer spot is massive. This is the fight for sixth and seventh as uh, Vecchio and Berryman look to try and go for it. Peter berryman has been quiet, and just behind that, they're scrapping about because it's going to be Simone Maria Marcheno trying to go around the outside. Just didn't quite see it, but what a race it's been so far, Connery, for this man, Lesse back. Yes, he holds on to a reverse grid pole position for the moment, but we do have to look forward. We have to look at Lasse back for the Fire Sim Sport team. It has been a textbook affair for the Danish driver. He heads his way out of the final corner to take the first sprint race win of the season. Look at this gaggle of cars behind them, though, all trying to squabble. We've got Tambi, Tvelgar, Vandenak all involved in that grouping coming across the line. I wonder what was the instigation with regards to that. The rest of the runners heading their way through here, Joe. My words, that got a bit chaotic, at least in the mid-pack and back at the end. I mean, that's putting it mildly. I'm looking down the order, and in a 33-car field, we have a separation of about 26 seconds for 32 of them there at the finish. So, I mean, that tells you all you need to know about the competition. 
It does. Slasser back though, 2.5 seconds to the good. Takes the race win here in the sprint race at Hockenheim. Alexin Yesov with the great defense takes home P2 with Caruso getting himself onto a well-deserved podium. Matthias Stokeback Jensen in P4 with Thomas Stadler in P5 with Gianni Vecchio in P6. Peter Berryman, 7th. Jeff Giassi will be a reverse grid pole position sitter as a result of finishing 8th in the sprint race. Marcheno will narrowly miss out on that, not without trying in the final lap though. Alessandro Pico rounds out the top 10. But of course yeah, you don't want to go away from things here because we do have our feature race coming up in just around about 4 minutes time you want to stick around but until then we'll just have to have a bit of a break Available September 27th. Pre-order your copy today. This is the world's premier online racing simulation. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat from your home computer with the most realistic online motorsports experience you'll find anywhere. Race virtually in the world's biggest events with officially licensed series, cars, and tracks. From the high banks of Daytona to the blistering speeds of Indianapolis, the dirt of Eldora to the world's most legendary road courses. It's all here, and with more than 180,000 people just like you already driving, you'll always have someone to race. Ready to get behind the wheel? Sign up at iRacing.com to get started. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Contender Series. One of those ads you just witnessed was for the World of Outlaws dirt racing game coming to consoles very soon. And in fact, incredibly soon because it's going to be releasing on the September 27th on the Tuesday next week, which is absolutely fantastic. iRacing's first foray into console racing for what feels like a couple of decades at this point. You definitely want to get yourself uh, involved in in that one coming to PlayStation and of course Xbox as well. I've heard uh, that the career mode is absolutely fantastic and in depth in that one as well. But without further ado, we will have to move on and we do have our race winner from the sprint race here at Hockenheim standing by with Jake Sperry. It's Lasse back. Yes, Lesser back here with me right now. Lesser, um, qualifying form from the qualifying series certainly has gone well. It looked like the moment turn four came along and uh, Alexei Nyesov was there behind you uh, defending, the race was as good as yours. It's been really good. Somehow I didn't, I didn't expect our, our pace to be this good. Uh, Kevin... Um, Kevin, my teammate, obviously had like a, um, a little mistake in his quality lap, but yeah, uh, shit happens. But um, yeah, just, I don't know, solid pace and just solid uh, setup on the car, I think, and was just able to, to pull away. Well, we'll wish you the best of luck. Eighth position is where you're going to be starting for the second race. So let's say back then has an opportunity now to make some points up when it comes to the main race, Connery. 
Yeah, it's uh, indeed a fantastic opportunity. We'll have to see how well he works his way through the field, starting from that eighth place on the starting grid for this main event. A race that is twice as long as what we saw in the sprint race uh, here. Uh, so potentially uh, uh, more action on the cards coming into this particular event. The warm-up session in between the two is now over and Yara Racing 7 will head on to our starting grid here in just a couple of moments' time. It's the results from the sprint race, but with the top eight drivers in reverse order. So it will be Jeff Giassi starting from pole position here today, which is a great opportunity for the Brazilian driver, the Team Redline machine, uh, to be able to get some good points here today. But it's the Apex Racing Team's Peter Berryman on P2. Gianni Vecchio, P3, with Thomas Dadala in P4, with Matthias Stobach Jensen and John Caruso lining up on row at number three. Alexin Yesov with Lasse back uh, lines up 7th and 8th. That's the end of the reverse grid. And then you have a look down to uh, Sonny Maria Barceno in P9, Alessandro Bico, As Oscar Bixrud, and Christopher Danbeach rounding out the top 12. Everyone else is as they finished there in the sprint race with uh, Melgar further back, Mandanak with Mangan, Sonnen, Erliel, and Rina rounding out the top 18. The rest of them cycling through on your screen right now as the drivers get themselves prepared for the second race of the evening we get our, ourselves prepared for the second race of the evening as well we had a decent affair in the sprint race but what does the main race have to hold what can it show us here 22 laps of racing action here at hockenheim the main event is underway for the porsche esports uh, tag lawyer uh, Super Cup Contender Series. Here we go, down in towards turn number one. It is Jeff Yassi that leads from Peter Berryman from Gianni Vecchio. Any instance through turn number one this time around? We're seeing a lot of drivers push themselves wide, but no spins and no contact like we saw the early going. Matthias Jensen, though, sending it down the inside of Thomas Tatler to try and improve positions early on, coming through the first sector. Tatler gets a good drive off, though. There's a car spun in the middle of the circuit, though. That, uh, I didn't quite see who that was. Simone. But uh, someone, uh, Maria, Simone, Simone Maria Barceno seems to have had problems early on. Down into the hairpin they go. Caruso looking to try and get himself in the battle ahead of him as well. Yeah, a disaster there as Simone ends up around, and that will be a huge loss of points. And look at the middle of the pack. They're two or three wide as they push through. That is the 63 trying to figure out a space to try and get through and work through the middle. This is some incredible battling right now, Connery. Yeah, it's crazy to see no matter where you look, at least in that mid-pack, they, they seem to go side by side for the first half of the lap. They've largely strung themselves out single file now coming into the back end of it. We're heading our way through the sax curve now as uh, we get to ourselves our first lap of the main race complete here at Hockenheim, Joe. And right now, Giassi is wishing that they would be fighting more because at first they gave him a little bit of a buffer. But the good news is that Jeffe had plenty of practice in that first race defending. We saw at the end that he was holding a lot of cars off. So it sounds like he's got a good amount of skill in that area, but he's going to need a lot of it because it's going to be a much longer race to do that. Here it is. A potential, potential for more opportunities a little bit later on, but look at this train of cars for the race lead. No early race break away uh, like we saw in the early stages of, of the sprint race. We saw Back actually get himself a decent gap early on here, but it seems like everyone has been able to keep themselves together, at least in the early going, as we'll see, uh, as we'll see a replay, at least from that start. We certainly will, and this will be what happens at turn two at the Iron Park Parabolica on the inside. And look like uh, Lesse back and Simone Maria Marcheno got themselves a bit of contact. The seas parted around Simone, and that is a great learning lesson for anyone who's out there wanting to learn how to race the first time. They're out there on iRacing. Hold the brakes. Whatever you do, hold the brakes. Everyone can drive around you and you're predictable. Brilliant job by Simone to make sure he mitigated as much damage to his Porsche 992 as possible. Yeah, that was the six of Dan, Be Dan Beats, unfortunately, that got into him there, who's still carrying on at about 15th. It's easier to avoid a stationary target than it is to avoid a, mo a moving one. That's just the simple case of things there as we head towards the end of lap number two here at Hockenheim. Battles in the mid-pack going on. It's absolutely fantastic to see these guys oh so close after, um, you know, after especially all the preamble of the sprint race and of course the start of this main race, everyone 
uh, definitely in uh, a very close proximity here. We see Oscar Mangan trying to get onto the back of Luca Kita. That's down for positions 19th and 20th. We see Simpler uh, a little bit further down the road as well. As someone just gets completely bullied out of turn two there. I think that was William Chadwick in the team Ford Silver Machine as we see Mat uh, Matuszewski there get himself the drive off the corner required. He has a decent run of speed down into the hairpin as well. Here's the onboard from Chadwick. Let's see if he's able to try and keep this place defended. It's going to be so tough around the outside of the hairpin though and it always has the potential to allow more cars behind to dip their nose in oh it's such an important battle out there and it's on for the lead because all of a sudden berryman who was attacking for it is having to defend from the other red line car of gianni vecchio so vecchio wants to try and find a way through he's going to look to the inside at the sax curve trying to get it sorted it's on camber it's banked through there and shoved out and hung out to dry is berryman who now looks at duomus datala and suddenly through the two final right hand corners has to defend again from what looked like it could have been the race lead half a lap ago from peter berryman well the northern irishman is sitting back in third place that's always the risk trying to go to an, uh, for an overtake around here at the shortened layouts here of hockenheim uh, you're just going to open the door potentially for those cars behind and that's exactly what has happened great opportunistic driving there from vecchio he potentially might on uh, might be on for going for the race lead now to see let's see if jeff giassi is able to hold on to that although we did see joe in that sprint race how well giassi defended that reverse grid pole position so i would say he's definitely up to it yeah and uh, right now this is what he needed i said it before he needed those guys to start battling and they didn't just about make contact again down through four we've had some switching around behind them as well as it looks like nesov got uh, passed by Vixrud and ba Beck finally got up into seventh place. But that's been uh, among some of the minimal changes of places we've seen despite this reverse grid, which is kind of shocking. It is, and uh, well, let's see if anyone's able to make any sort of improvement here, at least in the next couple of laps. Of course, you know, given that this race is two times longer than what we saw in the sprint race, as uh, we're on board with uh, one of the Cova machines there, that's of uh, uh, Ascali Rina, who's uh, involved in an active battle here uh, at the moment and uh, keeping hold of the car, at least rather well for the moment. There's a bit of an armada of cars behind him as well, the Tim Yarshell, Matty Sibler, Bobby Zelensky, as we can see that from the rear view cam. But returning back to my point though, Jake, this race 22 laps compared to the sprint races 11, that will mean that you know, potential bits of tyre wear might come into effect at the end of this one, not by significant amounts by any means, but the ones that can make a difference. And so too the mindset of how you tackle this race, because as there's a big look from the Dirt Esports outfit there, Yarshall getting past Rene, or trying to at least through turn three, will have the inside for turn four. The mindset is, that they're not racing for 25 points anymore they're racing for 50 and that is big in terms of how you go out and approach this race this is the race which has double the points because it's double the length too wide too deep as they go through the two cover cars going together rene and sipila going at it trying to find that move bobby zelensky has got the best seat in the house to it and he does oh is that a little bit of contact there as ascari reader gets sent wide and loses one two three potentially even four spots if we see oscar mangan try and work his way through here Rina does have a little bit of damage to the rear end. He's able to fend off Mangan. He goes to the inside on Keita into the sax curve. He's fed up by going backwards. He wants to press on and gain those, those, those positions back. Yeah, unfortunately for Rina, it's going to be tough to try and gather it back up. It's not really a momentum track so much as a rhythm track. We've seen this with multiple drivers here, Connery, where if you are offline or you get attacked, suddenly you're out of that rhythm and everybody's going to try and pounce on it because they know they have to take that when it comes. Yeah, it was a good opportunity uh, for Mangan to try and improve positions there, but uh, Rina making that Porsche pretty wide uh, in this situation and, and keeping cars behind him despite the rear end damage that he has sustained a little bit earlier on in this race. He's actually doing rather well to help hang on to that. Usually when we see any bits of damage to these cars, they can have a, a bit of an effect on them, especially when everyone is so close here, Jake. But Rina uh, is holding station for now, which is about as much as I think you would expect. Yeah, middle of the pack looking good as there's a look at the race lead. Red line one, red line two, as uh, Jeff uh, Giassi leads out from Gianni Vecchio. Peter Berryman currently in third position. 
races for the lead and 17th position going on right now. And what is so crucial is that these races that we've got going on are effectively still part of that same train. And that's what makes this series so incredible, is the fact that you can have a race for the lead, a race for 17th, and it's all part of the same ecosystem as they pretty much run in a train right now at a quarter's distance in this race. Six of the 22 laps then completed. They've got themselves another 16 to go and figure out here, Connery. Yeah, they're all pretty much in the same sector here. That's just how close they are. The snake of machines head their way down the pit straight into turn number one. Of course, the leaders heading their way into turn two at the moment. I have to wonder how much battling we'll see at the very front of the field between uh, Giassi and Nevecchio, uh, given, of course, Joe, uh, Joe that they are uh, from the same team, from the from Team Redline. But, you know, sometimes team orders do come into things. But how, how does potentially Peter Berryman affect things because he's so close behind now? Oh, I'd be hard-pressed that anybody would be willing to acquiesce to team orders here today. Is <laughs> Uh, Berryman, yeah, definitely want to try and maybe egg them on a little bit to fight a little more, to give himself an opportunity. I think that's the key here. Pressure. Keep the pressure on. Get right on top of the car ahead. Either get them to make a mistake or get them to push a little bit too hard. Indeed, and well, Peter Berryman, Jake, he is a bit of a Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup veteran as we see the battle for the race lead. Vietcho sends it down to the inside at the Saks curve. He's got a bit of oversteer on the inside. Is there any opportunity for Peter Berryman to try and work his way through on this one? Not so through the S's in towards the final couple of corners. That was big, a big statement there from Vecchio, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it whatsoever. And he almost lost a couple of positions as a result, just like race one. Well, this is where you have to be patient. There is still another 14 laps, 15 laps even, of racing to go here in this one. You can't win the race here on lap eight, but you can lose this race on lap eight. As Stockbeck Jensen had a little look there in the background, trying to get around uh, the Kova car of Duomus Datala so he can help out as much as he can Peter Berryman just in front. This is a really important phase of the race where the two drivers in front, Giassi and Vecchio, have to figure out whether they want to battle with each other or they want to work with each other so it'll be a race between those two drivers come lap 22. Well, I think we first saw the first statement there from Vecchio and that indicates no team orders between the two of them and uh, he's pressuring him quite firmly at the moment as well as uh, we uh, look back to the Cobra machine that is uh, uh, Thomas Tatala there that's uh, continuing to be involved in this battle. He's more of a third party at the moment. Here's another opportunity potentially at the front couple in towards the Saks curve. You're trying a, a different line into there, potentially to get him, give him the speed off the corner so he can work his way to the inside, outside through the final couple of corners. But I get the feeling that Giassi is just parking the bus at the moment. They are all stacked up behind him. And now this run actually goes to Berryman in third place as we look back from Jensen. Well, and see, that's the thing. Yes, he's parking it at the apexes, and he's making it difficult, but I've seen him defend on a couple corners. He learned from last time and defended down into the sax curve. But the more you do that, the more you're going to put yourself offline, and they're going to figure out a way around you because you're not going to be optimal as you see a bunch of attacks and a touch to Vecchio. Oh, and Berryman's forced wide as well. That gives the opportunity to Tatala to head his way through. Potentially the Apex Racing teammate of Matthias Jensen also. We're going to see potentially three wide here. Down the straight towards the head, but no, no one has any idea about where to go as we get again see three wide with Cruz. So in the oh, middle, one's gone. someone spun around though. So that's Alexei Niesov. Oh, after a good race in the sprint, he seems to have been sent down the order here in the main as the battles continue on up front. Well, that was always going to be a very difficult situation to navigate through. They were making contact all the way through the Parabolica. Oscar Bixer had very nearly turned another car on his nose. It was such a deadly situation. There was every which way to have a look at it. And I tell you what, it's still going to go on because it's still happening in the middle of the pack right now with the likes of uh, the RHG cars as Mondanark and uh, Sunern are uh, certainly fighting for it at the moment. This is an incredible race and it has just allowed the top two to give that bit of space. Yeah, Ariel looking to try and get into positions here early on as well. We potentially might have a replay of um, yes, of there was the contact with the Alta C Sports car on the inside, sending yes, of wide. 
Uh, it's uh, you know could have been a bit of a better main race from Yesov, but I wouldn't blame him uh, for that particular instant. Of course, all instants in this race will be investigated by the stewards after. That uh, is after the event. Nothing will be done during uh, the event here is the, is the case uh, in these series. Uh, so he's just going to have to wait and see if anything results of that post-race. But uh, lap 10 of 22 at the moment, getting towards the halfway stage here, Joe. Things have certainly picked up. Yeah, it really has. And, and poor Nyesov, I have to feel for them because I was trying to look at that and I don't know what much he could have done differently. He was just mm -hmm. in a bad space outside of three wide in one of the tightest and slowest corners on the track so he kind of just had to cross his fingers and hope that everybody was uh was staying in and uh, they did not we do have a uh, another instant replay lined up here as well a lot of action over the last couple of moments there uh, that was the number 17 car of matty sippler oh. oh and the 53 i believe it was a tim yarshell having a big one yeah, Parabolic is a, a bit of a, a long curve, so that, me to me, looked like a bit of miscommunication trying to defend and pick your line. So it's, it's always hard in those situations where uh, the track isn't as straightforward, quite literally, as you'd like it to be. It's always uh, tricky in those situations, but lap 11 and 22 now. There's the very front of the field. Jesse still leads from Vecchio, from Tadatala there. Uh, in third place they've spaced spaced out a little bit more than we're used to seeing them at least over the last couple of laps but you know saying that it's uh, um you know they, they were incredibly close over the last couple of laps so they're just still within the same postcode here at the moment at least the vast majority of the rest of the field no opportunities down into the hairpin this time around for anyone in this single file line all the way down that back straight Let's see what's the, uh, the, this replay of uh, Zelensky that happens a little bit earlier on down in the bottom right-hand side. Well, as that's going on, it's about half a second that has come out of the gap from fourth to first. Matthias Scott, Bake Jensen, fastest driver on track. That is the look from Zelensky in the bottom right. He had the seas parked for him as he went through one with uh, Matti Sipola, the other, of course, being Tim Yarshall in the Dur Esports outfit. So that there for Bobby Zelensky was something. But I'll tell you what, Matthias Stockbeck Jensen is the fastest driver on track and the slowest driver of the entirety of the train right now is the driver who's in position number one, defending for everything he's worth. Jeffe Giassi is right now balled up and he is waiting for a breather. But they've bunched up a little bit more over that previous lap, haven't they? So I have the feeling that things might start in and amongst this leading group once again uh, pretty imminently, especially if Vecchio gets himself a good run through these first couple of corners, through this first sector pretty much to size himself up for, uh, uh, for the move down in towards the hairpin. Jesse gets himself a decent run that time around. He just has to do his bit in that way to make sure that this move does not happen. But we've seen Joe, the uh, uh, Vecchio go for surprise lunges, go for moves from a car length or so back. So even though uh, Vecchio might be in this position, doesn't mean Giassi is at all comfortable and he feels the need actually to take a defensive middle line through the left. Uh, you can see trying to cut back, Gianni's doing everything he can. And, and honestly, what seems the most frustrating to me is that that 70 car is a little bit faster in this part of the track where it's a lot harder to pass. He needs to be faster coming out of turn two, down into four as he just kicks up the dirt. He's trying to find every inch of it that he can utilize, and it's just not giving him the right places to overtake. Vecchio is absolutely pushing at this stage, but Giassi very much the cork in the bottle at the moment uh, of course it, he's well within his rights to maintain his position even if it is up, up, up against teammates he did the good work he defended p8 in the sprint race got reverse grid pole position and now he has to make the most of it the best he can and he's doing so absolutely magnificently the man from florianopolis is doing everything possible but gianni vecchio is looking each way to try and figure out can he find an opportunity to get through he's looking pretty calm right now as uh, we take a look then uh, on top with Duomo's Datala's view you've got uh, Giassi there and Vecchio who are looking through and if Vecchio can find this move and he can find a brilliant move on uh, Giassi we might have to start calling him the ice step arrow with the way that he can find an overtake Vecchio certainly going for, well, uh, if he gets this pass done, potentially driver of the team material, considering uh, uh, how hard that this will be. 
uh, but he still has plenty of time to do this. Ten laps to go. Uh, Jassy continuing to deal with this pressure. The preferred move here, Joe, from Vecchio has seemed to be a surprise lunge into the Saks curve, but he hasn't been close enough on these previous couple of laps to really threaten that in any way. And I'm a bit surprised that that's been his go-to because the Saks curve isn't usually a, a place where you see a lot of passes. Even though it's a hairpin, we heard Jake mention it earlier, there's so much banking there that you can just chuck the car very deep in. So he's going to be hard-pressed to execute on that one. Again, I still think turn two, turn four is your way to go. I think so too, but what's in the mind of Gianni Vecchio? That's the question here. He needs to pull off something special to be able to take the race lead here. He's always gesturing towards the inside there, trying to put Giassi, uh, you know, out of it a little bit, cause him to look in his wing mirrors and not at the circuit ahead of him. Jeffe Giassi is looking in the mirrors and that is always a scary <laughs> prospect with nine laps to go because Vecchio wants to try and find a way through. But what about the crew, the cast that are there behind who will want to capitalize on the two red line drivers who are one and two right now? Duttler, Stockbait, Jensen, Berryman. You've got Caruso in there. Right now there's Gustavo Ariel currently in a fight right now as he looks at Christopher Danbeat just behind him uh, as they go through. Volonton Mandanak in the middle of that there, number 46. He is the sort of driver right now, Connery, that I think could be the future of Volonton Mandanak. He is so adaptable when it comes to the way that he drives and he's still just 16 years of age. He is so good and give him five years, he'll be as good as Sebastian Job as there's the, the contact a bit from behind. 33, Alexei Nyesov trying desperately to find a way through and it opens up Zelensky now versus Luka Kita. Yeah, that was a big lunge there from Yesov. Of course, he's on a bit of a recovery drive and it continues on between the two of them right there in the background of that shot. Dan beats and Zelensky side by side coming across the start finish line. Luka Kita also involved in this one in the Urano Esports machine, but it seems like the Koanda car has gotten the best of them so far. And now Dan Beats has to be on the defensive as we see Tatler. Tatler has pushed wide, coming up through turn number two. He loses a boatload of spots. Oh, and we kind of expected that. As soon as you're going to get offline, you're going to have to give way and not try to drive back into everybody. So this is going to promote a whole bunch of people up forward for these valuable points. But they're racing so close together. I'm surprised we haven't seen more bumping and banging out there because they're really, really flirting with disaster the way that they're leaving almost nothing to error. Uh, and we're still sitting in the position where we're eight laps to go. If they're like this with eight laps to go, I dread to think what they'll be like with one, two, maybe three laps to go. As it seems like Tatler, potentially it was not a solo car incident and he had a little bit of help potentially from behind here uh, in this situation on the replay. So uh, uh, rather not from behind, from the side by side. Mm. As we see uh, Vecchio and Tatler go side by side into the corner. There's a little bit of contact that sends Tatler over the curb. And he has no choice but to take the big wide arc, take the off-track uh, incident point as well, and lose low spots. Well, that is the most difficult place on the circuit to pass. It's a one-line suits all corner as you go up to the Nord curve. And every time you go through, you're fighting for as much real estate on the left-hand side of the circuit to arc through the right. I don't blame uh, Vecchio for the position that he was in. But that there for Datala as a place to try and make a move. He was looking at trying to get to second. He ends up in eighth. Connery, that is a 21-point uh, scuffle that they just had. Yeah, it, it, it's major, absolutely major, especially in a main race such as this one when you have uh, uh, lots of points on offer. For more information on this series, though, schedule standings and how to become a driver, log on to iRacing.com forward slash pest today so you can get yourself a track of everything going on, not just here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Contender Series. You can have a look at the results and standings from the qualifying series. And once we get the main series underway, you can keep track of that one as well at iRacing.com forward slash pest. But we have seven laps to go here of this uh, uh, main race at Hockenheim in the Contender Series. Well, we count it as six and a half laps potentially here. Vecchio has fell, fallen off the back of Giassi a little bit. Most of that has been due to the, the contact that we had with that alert, the, the, uh, uh, well, just a couple of moments ago. He's fallen back a little bit into the clutches of Matthias Jensen here, uh, Joe. And, well, Jake pointed it out. Jensen has been rather quick out there in terms of the lap time so far. 
And unfortunately, oh. we're seeing some black flags being oh. served down into pit lane, and everything has to be maximized, including your pit lane entry. That's almost some contact with each other. I'm sure that would elicit a few more black flags. Yeah, instant limits. Well, instant penalty at 17 incidents. And if you get to 25, you will be disqualified. So if you get uh, over 17, you'll have to come do and, and do this drive through penalty that Ascali Arena, Asandro Pico and uh, Oscar Mangan are doing here at the moment. Meanwhile, returning towards the front of the field, Vecchio trying to eke in that gap a little bit more to the race leader, Matthias Jensen certainly giving him a good run for his money and Jensen has the benefit here Jake of having an apex racing teammate of Peter Berryman behind he, he does and that will be news to his ears and Matthias Stockbeck Jensen knows that when you've got as much experience as Peter Berryman is behind Berryman's not going to go and make a move on his teammate for no reason at all he mm. is going to sit there and watch what the young 17 year old can do to try and find that pass so that's going to be crucial what will also be crucial is keeping an eye on the instant points come the end of the race because if they pick up instant point number 17 connery on the final lap that is a 40 second time penalty because they will not have time to come to the pits and serve the penalty yeah, it will be so again yeah gotta keep a close eye on it we have to wait for all the runners to come across the line to get the at least the unofficial results confirmed and of course, then it will be a post-race situation with regards to any uh, protests that come in. But yeah, in terms of the incident points, we'll get the result of that rather quickly if anything has happened on the final lap. But we are still a couple of laps away from that point at the moment, still continuing to check in with these guys at the very front of the field. Jesse still holding on to that race lead in relatively comfortable fashion at the moment. Vecchio hasn't been able to pressure him so much, at least recently, but there's a mistake potentially from Vecchio as it has now allowed Jensen to go down the inside at the left. Berryman gonna try and follow through on his tire tracks here as well. Jesse running for the hills as Vecchio tries to keep the apex racing team behind him. As oh, Berryman might get one over his teammate here. He has the inside line for the kink. Coming into the arena section here, he has been able to gain that position. So Vecchio holds on, although Jensen gets a teammate down his inside for his troubles. Yeah, and I don't blame Jensen for doing that because in that situation, yeah, you got to try and jump as soon as he got a mistake from Vecchio, which is we've been hard pressed to see them out of Gianni so far in this race. Man, the battle's still carrying on behind them there between Beck, uh, Bixrud, and, and Dekula. But yeah, so unfortunately, it's a case of I understand why he made that mistake, but he did put himself into a rough spot open in the door coming out of the arena. Yeah, and Jake, it, it is those little mistakes, isn't it? It wasn't even a major one from Vecchio. It's, it's just like he wasn't able to get the traction down, had a little bit of a, not even a snap of oversteer, just a, a hint of oversteer. And that just resulted in Jensen getting that opportunity. That's all that's required. Three laps ago, I saw him down at the sax curve and he did not look comfortable under brakes. I think Vecchio is in trouble right now in comparison to being too aggressive too early. Here goes Datala down the inside of Oscar Bixrud trying to get the pass sorted. And he's going to manage that comfortably to move back up into seventh position behind. Big lunge up the inside from uh, Sunern as he gets the pass done on uh, the Spaniard in the French Monaco esports car. Arturo Melgar had nothing for it. Yeah, that was a bit of a, a surprise lunge, lunge there from Sunan. Very well worked indeed. He's been a, a silent mover uh, throughout this race. Uh, he started in P16 and he's now up into P9. So a great performance for the number 40 here in this main race. While our primary focus has been at the front of the field, he's slowly been working his way through, Joe. And that's the sort of stuff you need to do. Remember, this is to get into the Super Cup. So we, we need to worry about, and they need to worry about, the top 15 finishing positions in points. If you finish in the top 15, well, there's a big part of the job Ooh. done as we got another black flag for incident limits. It looks like a red line car. Indeed it is. Down on towards Pitts Lane. Josh Thompson. Uh, we've got Josh Thompson in. Yeah, we've got more drivers in as well. We've got Victor Miranda. We've got Matty Siepler also deciding to come down it rather forced not deciding forced to come down <laughs> in uh for the drive through penalty due to an instant limit violation here's the battle for p2 though peter berryman edging his way to the inside oh it's a closing door and he locked up the brakes as well it's triggered a, uh, a, a, a situation behind him as well as jordan caruso taking the initiative trying to get around matthias Jensen. he's going to try and drive the long way around can't quite get it though has to fall back in line 
That very nearly got bowling shoe ugly. That could have been a complete disaster. But ultimately, Peter Berryman had the wherewithal to get on the binders, try and get out of the move with Vecchio, and he did just enough. And crucially, it hasn't costed any positions at all. Massive in terms of this race. When you've got Caruso behind, let's say, backs there, Duttler, Bixrud, uh, Sunern, Melgar, they're all there. They all want the points. They all want the positions. And they're down to just two laps to go when they cross the line. Suddenly, for Jeff Giassi, he knows he's got a gap because Vecchio behind is finally, in terms of what he wants in this race, having to pull defensive duties. This is the ideal situation situation for Giassi. Vecchio is occupied, potentially might have burned up some of his rubber in the early stages, trying to apply the pressure as we see the replay of the pit entries uh, for the instant limit violators, shall we say, uh, over the course of this event. So yet more have decided to head their way down and in. Two laps to go now. Vecchio has gotten himself a bit of a gap over Berryman. Denson not going to challenge his teammate whatsoever either, although they do bunch up coming through this section. Seems like Vecchio's on the back foot. He seems to be losing time to Berryman through these corners. If I'm honest, I think the 70 car has been overdriving the car a little bit here. We've already seen a couple mistakes now. He's not staying up with the 7 anymore. Uh, it is possible, even though it's not a huge concern, to, to overuse the tires, to overheat them. It's mainly the rears late in the race in the Porsche that uh, starts to, to lose that grip. And I think that's what's happening to Gianni. Yeah, you know, he applied all that pressure early on, had a very go forward attitude, but it has come back to bite him a little bit, I get the feeling, as we head our way into the final corner now for the penultimate time, heading our way to the line. White flag is out from Barney the Flagman. One more lap to go, one more lap to decide who gets second place and back here. I get the feeling because Giassi is running away with things. Look at how wide that v uh, Gianni Vecchio pushed there in that situation, really playing with the instant limits here to try and keep himself in contention. Berryman, though, this is going to be a tough ask from third. If you got them in the back pocket, you may as well use them. And right now, Vecchio has got himself enough of a gap. He's got himself a gap of about four car lengths as they run on the brakes towards turn four. The entire train is just going to have to watch at the prime place to get it done because nobody is close enough. Everyone equidistant apart as they run through the middle section of the track. And all of a sudden, it's going to have to come down to the stadium section if you want to move. Peter Berryman will know a lot better than to jeopardise a P3 position, which is 40 points here, Connery, if he knows that he can book a top 15 place. For Giassi, I think he's safe at the moment, but he's got to make no mistakes from here. Yeah, it's so easy to bottle it in the final couple of laps. Hopefully I'm not giving him the curse of the commentator in this situation as he heads his way through the sax curve for the final time. Berryman's not close enough to do anything about Vecchio. That's pretty much confirmed. But it is the Brazilian. It is the number seven. It is the red line driver of Jeff Giassi that heads his way out of the final corner to take the first main race win of the season here in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Contender Series. Jeff Giassi has done it from a reverse grid pole. Look at how much it means to him. He's in tears. Look at him. He had to fight so hard for that one. And I just think the pictures say it all. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And even his family coming in to congratulate him. That tells you the kind of pressure. You know, we often talk about, yes, the cars aren't necessarily like real cars, but the emotions and the intensity of these races, Connery, are very real. Just look at that. That is incredible. You can tell how much it means to him. How much it means to any one of these drivers. Usually they don't show it in such obvious fashion. Usually they are, you know, stone-faced, heading their way across the line. Jesse, anything but. He has to prepare himself for an interview. Now come and speak to us. Uh, but yeah, fantastic stuff there. Jesse taking our first main race win of the season here in the Contender Series. Let's head to the Bows post-race show with all of that said and done here, Joe. Uh, what a race. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, I could feel the emotion off, off of the screen there watching him. And, and I'm sure Giassi is going to treasure this memory for a long time. You can see Vecchio. I mean, credit to him. He still brought it home in second and he tried everything. But uh, like you said, it, I think he just pushed a little too hard there. Yeah, indeed. It, it was a great effort from Vecchio. It, it was, uh, you know, he threw everything at the kitchen sink at it and maybe even the kitchen sink might not have been enough. 
uh, for Vecchio as uh, Jesse takes the race win. Uh, it's going to be a happy day for Team Redline, I would have thought, with a 1-2 finish. Happy day for Team uh, for Apex Racing Team as well. They get 3-4 and four with Peter Berryman and Matthias Stokeback jensen with Jordan Caruso getting a respectable P5 with Lasse back P6 after his sprint race win. Uh, Thomas Tatler, problems? A few problems in this race. Getting bullied out of line by Vecchio into turn 2, but uh, comes home P7 with Oscar Bixford in P8. Uh, Julian Sunan in P9 with Altru Melgra in P10. Then we have a look further down the order. We've got uh, Gustavo Ariel in P11 with Valentin Mandanak in P12. Alexin Yesov in P13 with Bobby Zelensky P14. Christopher Danbeat P15 with Luka Kita, Kevin Nielsen, Sank Heitert and Jacob Majewski in P19. William Chadwick with a top 20 finish. And then those uh, further down the order, you got Bryn Collins there, P20, P21 with Phil Bouchard in P22. Tim Yarshell, Ascali Rina, uh, Alessandro Pico is going to be the first car, one that lap down. Then we've got Oscar Mangan, Victor Miranda, Josh Thompson, Matty Sipla, and Andre Melchers rounding out the top 30. And then those uh, wrestlers' retirements, pretty much. Uh, and Richie Stanaway, Quentin Vialat, uh, Simone Marceno, and David Williams actually did not take the start. So wow. there we go. Uh, we've uh, got ourselves our, at least our unofficial results in, of course, pending review from the stewards after this event. But Jake, you're standing by with our race winner. I absolutely am. And what an incredible race uh, that ended up being. And I'm sure in uh, just a couple of moments, I'll get the chance to talk to uh, Jeffe Giassi. And I will do right now. Jeffe, uh, what an incredible result that is for you. You had to be on the absolute defensive for all 22 laps of that race. Uh, hey, uh, good evening for everybody. This was for sure the, the most difficult race of my life. Um, I've been in, in the pros uh, level for like uh, three or four years and uh, this is the first uh, win for me. So I, I, I've always been the one that puts the most practice. And so I always felt uh, that I deserved the win. And I'm really happy that I finally, after so many years and so many tries, I got it. And that's it. Brazilians never give up. So let's go. That nice. Well, it's absolutely incredible to see how much work that you've put in. Just talk to us about the work that's been going on behind the scenes with Team Redline and such an esteemed esports outfit that's helped you get to this position. Uh, in, in Team Redline, everybody's so uh, incredible. Uh, everybody puts a lot of work. So we all did a lot of uh, preparation for this race. And uh, I did absolutely everything that I could. Um, until yesterday, I was not confident with my pace. I thought that would be like just another race. Uh, but suddenly, I could keep the pressure into making a good quality lap in, a, in just one lap. And the, the reverse grid uh, got me the chance to start P1. And uh, in Team Red Lines, we don't have uh, lots of team orders, so we had uh, a zero for this race, so it was really hard to defend Jenny, which is a, a fantastic driver. And, and Peter Berryman, my, my former teammate, was uh, really difficult to hold as well, so uh, I had to do uh, uh, everything that I could, and, and I've never been so cold in my entire life, because I had to be really cold, and uh, after I crossed the line, the emotion started to come, but until then, I was... Uh, trying to, to not feel a thing and not be scared and just try to hold a position the best that I could. Jeffe, go celebrate, my friend. That is a victory, and you are on top of the world right now. Porsche Esports Super Cup and the Contender Series, we've got ourselves a fantastic contender in Jeff Giassi. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Well, there we go. Uh, well, that was Jeff Giassi, our, our race winner, and you can see how much it means to him. We are standing by, of course, with uh, yet another interviewee. Uh, Jake, take it away with uh, Jesse's teammate of Vecchio. Gianni, that looked like by about lap six of that race, you had an opportunity to go out there, try and take that lead away, but it looked like Jeff just wasn't having it. You had to really work for it, and chaos ensued behind you the moment you tried to attack. Yeah, I mean, you can't, like, obviously, when you drive against your teammate, you go a bit more cautious, because um, I know Jeff worked really hard for it, he deserves it, he had pretty, like, a pretty tough time lately, but I was like, yeah, yeah obviously, you can't take out your teammates, so I, I was a bit more cautious. Um, I mean, in the end, I'm, 
super happy for him. He deserves it quite a lot. So yeah, I mean, P2 doesn't sound too bad at the end of the day as well. So I take it. Let's talk tyres here, Gianni, because it looked like towards the end of the race, you were struggling a little bit to keep the pace up. Yeah, it's like super hard to get the tyres back into a working window. It was obviously I was behind Jeff with the dirty air. You have to work them quite hard. And I was trying to pass at a few points, but it didn't work out. Then I had this little um, scrapping with Peter, which killed my left rear tyre. And that tyre is obviously like the most important tyre on the whole track, since I think we have like two left-handers, three, I don't know, and the rest is right-handers, so... <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that was in the end of it bad that I cooked the tires there, and it, as I said, super hard to get them back into a working window. I didn't manage that too good, so it was a bit close in the end, but yeah, worked out. Well, a good result for you today, and hopefully we'll see more of that then next week at Silverstone. So there you have it, Gianni Vecchio, second position, a great job, well done. Thank you. There we go. That was uh, Gianni Vecchio. You got one more here, Jake. You're standing by with Peter Berryman. I do. And I tell you what, Peter Berryman here with me right now. That was a really mature drive and a mature performance from you doing what you needed to to score the points that you needed here today. When everyone had themselves an opportunity to attack, you kept a cool head on your shoulders. How important was it to stay aware of the situation around you, especially around lap six, lap eight? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that race was pretty crazy. I, I, I wouldn't say I really managed it. I mean, I had a good few cracks, but yeah, it's difficult. It's hard to overtake people that clearly don't want to be overtaken and will do uh, almost anything to, to make sure you don't get past. So yeah, it's, it's difficult to overtake alone. So um, yeah, the middle of the race there was, was pretty crazy. So um, yeah, I think I was just quite lucky that nothing too serious happened. Bit bumped and bruised, but um, yeah, still happy to come away with uh, P3. Let's talk about with about a couple of laps to go. You had one chance to get through on Gianni Vecchio, but it just looked like the door was closing on you. How crucial was it for you to get out of that overtake? Um, yeah, it was it was pretty much life or death uh, for, my, for my race there. I don't really, I don't understand the race craft there. Um, I think it was clear, at least on my end, that I was alongside the car and then all of a sudden the car swerving and, and heading into me. So um quite thankful we didn't crash but yeah that sort of that sort of driving shouldn't really it shouldn't really last um so hopefully the stewards look into that well you have a solid haul of points peter and you can take a lot of momentum going to silverstone brilliant job from you today and as well as from the apex racing team thanks guys cheers well, there you have it, Connor. Eight Peter Berryman there in third position. And what an incredible racing week we've had to open up the action that we've had, which will only continue one week from today at Silverstone. Yeah, that main race in particular was a bit of a roller coaster, but that was just the first round of the season, believe it or not. We have another one on the 1st of October, this time at the home of British Motorsports. We go to Silverstone for round number two of the championship here, Joe. I cannot wait as we get a good view of the Porsche Experience Center at Silverstone. Yeah, indeed, and that's going to be another one that is going to really push the drivers, no doubt, around here. It's it's another track with a lot of modern F1 facilities around there, so I think it's going to test them in terms of those track limits again. We saw that was a big sticking point for a number of them today, so they got to be on their P's and Q's. And Jake, do you, do you enjoy what you've seen today? What are your expectations heading into next week's affairs at Silverstone? And not only Sil the uh, Silverstone, but of course the international layout as well. It's going to be very, very similar in terms of feel from what we saw today at the Hockenheim ring. I think that it's going to be the sort of race where you're going to see different drivers come up to the front because it's going to be such an intense high-speed circuit. There's only one real heavy braking zone, and that is coming out then towards the Vale and Club corner. So you've got to be alert to that move there. That's going to be the prime place to get it done. But the one thing I'm looking at right now is who is going to step up and take initiative because it's the feature race which I think is proving that you're going to have to work really hard to score maximum points.
Yeah, that certainly seems to be the case. Those Dats were on the bad end of the reverse grid, struggling a little bit to work their way through the field because it's just so competitive. But that's all that we have time for here at Hockenheim for the first round of the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Contender Series. But you don't have to wait long to get another round of this one. We head to Silverstone next week uh, here on the iRacing streams, but we'll have to end it now. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again at Silverstone.